Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Have you ever caught your dog eating poop? Or, I mean, maybe this could be like every once in a while. This could be regularly. Chances are, if you have a dog, there is a good chance they have eaten poop before. And we're going to talk about it today because there are some really, really interesting, there are really interesting things that I, I want to tell you about in regards to your dog eating poop, which is pretty, pretty gross to us. I have to admit, it's very, very gross. It's even difficult to say out loud, <laughs> but it's a reality. We got to talk about it. So let's dive in. Okay. So the first thing I want to say about your dog eating poop is let's get over the ick factor. Like it's icky. I know it. You know it. We don't want to talk about it, but we're talking about it. So let's just put the ick factor behind us and just let's have a conversation. Okay. Because this is, this is actually pretty darn important. Like we, we need, we need to talk about this. If your dog, even if They've only done, maybe you've only noticed that they've done it once, or maybe you have a serial poop eater. We, we want to talk about this. Okay. Now, when I talk, when I say dogs eating poop, they could be eating their own poop. They could be eating other dogs poop. They could be eating cat poop, or if they have access or are around other animals, they may be eating other animals poop. And this is a, the term for it is coprophagia. And I'm not going to say that word again. It's a long word. Nobody knows what it is, but there is like a clinical term for it, just so you know. And there isn't much of a general consensus as to exactly why this happens, but what we think is more than likely. So, well, as a dog trainer, I see it as there's they're looking for nutrition that their body is saying, I need something, right. Or I want something. And generally that's, you know, maybe some enzymes missing from the diet or, and we'll talk about this a a little later. It it could actually just be like, I'm bored. I'm hungry. I'm craving something. Right. And then there's, there's behavioral, right. So there, there are a couple, there are a lot of things really going on here. So I'm not speaking necessarily, you know, I don't know you or your dog, but when, what I talk about today, you're going to be able to like put the pieces together with your dog specifically. Right. So let's first talk about the idea that there, you know what? No, let me start here because somebody once posted a comment on a video that I did about this. Um, and it's been a little while, but he said that he like, he goes out and puts hot sauce on top of the poop so that his dog doesn't eat it. And my first response was like, if you're going out there, why don't you just pick up the poop? Like we've talked about managing your dog's environment before, right? And that is key. So if your dog is eating their own poop, then you need to be cleaning up their poop in the backyard. If we're going to talk, there's a lot more to this, but just just to start off, right? That's one of the most basic, simple things that you could be doing. If your dog is eating poop out of the cat litter box, then we can block access to the cat litter box. So these are some really basic things we can do to help manage our dog's environment, to help prevent these behaviors that we don't want happening. But a general consensus among a lot of veterinarians who have had the time who have taken the time to really look into this is that our dogs are likely trying to supplement the nutrition in their body. Their cells are screaming that they need something. And that could be many different things. I do want to give a shout out here to Julianne Lee of Adored Beast Apothecary. And I don't, I don't have her blog post pulled up in front of me. Um, it, it, I read it a few months back and she was saying that humans are some of the only species that don't (laughs) utilize feces, 
poop, right? We don't, we find it nasty and I, we do. I know, I do, I do too. But it's actually a really natural thing in the animal kingdom for them to, you know, I mean, if you think about rabbits, it's, it's common knowledge to a rabbit person. Now I'm not much of a, you may not be a rabbit person, so it may not be common knowledge to you. And I get that, but that's what they do. They actually, when they poop, they eat it because there's still nutritional value there. And so this is actually a common thing throughout the animal kingdom. So it doesn't, it, it's really us. It's really our perception of this being nasty. So there are actually some therapies out there where that, that utilize, uh, specifically with dogs, um, other dogs, like super healthy dogs, feces, and they're called fecal transplants. They happen. And I, if I'm not mistaken, they may actually happen with humans too. They're just not, they're not super mainstream because who the heck wants to talk about that? Um, but so let's, let's talk a little bit more about the idea that there could be something missing from your dog's diet. Your dog is seeking out, like there's the cells in their body could be seeking out nutrients. Now, do they know for sure if that poop contains the nutrients? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but their body could be saying there's nutrition there. Let's, let's eat that. Right? Like that could be happening. So the very best thing we can do in this instance is to feed our dog a better diet. And of course, you know me. So any chance I get to say, um, you know, if you can at all feed your dog a healthier diet, if we can add some fresh food into the bowl, if we can completely switch them to a fresh food diet, wouldn't that be wonderful balanced, of course, because that's what we're talking about, right, is, is balance it's in the idea that your dog your dog's body is screaming that they need something or they want something. And um, I actually have a really, really interesting theory about this when our dogs eat cat poop. So make sure you stick around because I want to, I want to talk about that a little bit more in detail, but I want to kind of give you an overview of the idea, you know, what could be going on with your dog when they're eating poop. So even if, even if they're eating their own poop, this still can apply because maybe their body isn't functioning uh, at a hundred percent, right? Maybe they aren't pulling out all of the nutrients that could possibly be pulled out of this food. That's also a possibility. And so re like, just like I was talking about with rabbits, this is common for rat, like every rabbit does this and people who have rabbits as pets know this. So this could also be the same with dogs where their body maybe isn't functioning at hundred um, percent. There is something called leaky gut and that's just one example. Maybe their body isn't processing nutrients in the way that it ideally would if their body were hundred percent. And so there are, there are nutrients left. That's a possibility. And of course this would also make sense if your dog is eating another dog's poop or another animal's poop, maybe your cat's poop. This would also make sense that there could be, left that there still could be nutrients in, in in the excrement right like that is not only possible it's probable and that in turn <laughs> could lead to a behavioral issue because once your dog starts doing it then it's like maybe they're bored and oh look let me go searching for something good to, to to ingest and and i say good we don't have any knowledge to the fact that it may taste good it may not it could literally just be that your dog is seeking out nutrients and it doesn't matter that it doesn't taste good to them their body is saying ingest this right like that is totally a, a possibility now there, of course, there is a possibility that it might taste good, especially, and we're going to talk about this a, a little bit later, um, an idea I have about dogs eating cat poop, but this could definitely turn into a behavioral issue because if your dog does it over and over again, one, maybe you catch them and you're reprimanding them and maybe it's just, that's attention, right? And it doesn't matter if it's good attention or bad attention, it's attention. So that that could be a possibility, like they get attention. It could be a possibility that they're just bored and they're looking for something to do. So adding more enrichment to their life is going to be something that you really wanna look into. And if you haven't heard the, the word enrichment before, definitely go back to some of uh, the older podcast, 
So even the, the, or, or, oh my goodness, there's tons of information on, on my YouTube channel. Um, just search the pet parenting reset, but enrichment is basically providing things for your dog to do that engages their brain and their body. So it could be that your dog is bored. It could be, it could be <laughs> that over time, you like your dog has just done this. And so now they continue to do it, even if their body isn't saying to them anymore, hey, eat that, I need this nu nutrition, right? So, and, and then of course we get into, um, you know, and I don't want to talk about this too much because it makes me super, super sad, but abuse cases or dogs that uh, were rescued from puppy mills, like the idea of eating their feces is is normalized for them, um, both because they're bored out of their mind and because prob probably they are um, lacking in, in nutrition. So that could be a hard habit to break if you adopt a puppy mill rescue, but certainly one that is well worth the task because these dogs deserve and need um, so much from us. But I don't want to talk about that too much because it makes me so, so super sad, but that is just one instance um, of an abuse case. And yes, puppy mill dogs are, I mean, that, that is just a fact. They are, they're abuse cases. Unfortunately, they are victims. And um, so it, for them, it's just a way of life and breaking them of that habit can be difficult because it, be, it, it started out as a necessity, whether that was to engage their brain, um, for something to do or to meet a nutritional deficit. And now it has turned behavioral. And, and this could be the same with a dog who isn't in an abuse situation just because maybe they are lacking in enrichment in their lives. So it could be one or the other or both, I guess is ba basically what I'm saying. It could be that they're looking for nutrients. It could be that they're bored and they need something to do. So uh, either way, now I, I want to talk to you briefly about this idea I had because all great ideas come to us in the shower, right? <laughs> so I was thinking about digestibility and I, I know that's a big word and I basically already told you what it is, but the availability of nutrients in the food. So when your dog or your cat eats a food, they ha there's a digestibility factor. How much of the nutrition in that food is your pet actually getting? And so I thought of this in the shower <laughs> a while ago, and I said, I need to do a podcast about this because this is just fascinating to me. Think about how much time and energy we put into our dogs versus our cats in general. If you're listening to this podcast, there's a really good chance that you put just as much energy into your cats as you do your dogs. However, as a society, we are really, really like hyper-focused on our dogs and our cats are kind of second-class citizens. And for so that is not true for all people. Don't come at me, please. But in general, in our society, that's how it works. So the idea that our dog could be eating a better food than our cats is totally, totally possible. And in many instances, probable. So I had the idea, like the digestibility of our cat food could be playing a role in our dog's poop eating behavior, especially you know, if you have a multi-pet household, if you have a multi-species, bipetual, I think is what we call it, right? Um, if you have dogs and cats and maybe your dog is pulling cat poop out of the litter box. Now, one, this could of course be behavioral. It could be like, oh, that's something I never get in. That's not mine. I don't know what that is. That litter box belongs to the cat. I want to check it out. And then they get there and it's like, oh, this is interesting. And then it's something to eat or something to play with. Right. Um, but I think more than anything, the digestibility factor of our cat's food could have a lot to do with this because there could be a lot of nutrition left over, um, that your cat is not actually getting out of their food. It is being excreted through their body because let's face it, our pets in general in the society are not fed well. And most people I talk to, not all, don't come at me, but most people I talk to, if they, if they do start down this journey of feeding a better diet, of providing a better environment for their pets, 
yada, 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 all the things, they start with their dogs. And if they have a cat, then it can at some point extend to their cat. I've talked to many people that this has been the traje trajectory. If I can say that word. In fact, this was my trajectory. I started with my dog and then I was like, oh my, with my cats. And now I'm working on me. And that's just how this has progressed. And I think that's true with a lot of people. So when we think about the digestibility of our cat's food and how much nutrition they're actually getting from their food, especially if we're feeding them a kibble, right? Or, you know, a dry, dry food kibble, there is likely, or, or some wet foods, not all wet foods are created equal. There is likely a lot of nutrients left in that in, in their feces and their poop. So in addition, right, your dog and your cat, regardless of where you are on your health journey or your pet's health journey, your dog and your cat are not eating the same food. So maybe your dog is eating one thing, say chicken, and your cat may be eating salmon. I don't know. That's just what popped in my head. But maybe your dog is like, oh, there's salmon in there. Like it smells different because they're eating a different food. So there is a lot, there's a lot going on here, guys. And I really wanted to bring this idea up to you first and foremost, that if we can meet our dog's needs nutritionally to begin with, and then we can meet our dog's needs, um, with, enrichment. So we're providing plenty of mental and physical exercise for our dog every day. And we're managing the environment so they don't have access to things that we don't want them to get into. Then we won't have this issue of your dog eating poop. Now, like I said earlier, humans are some of the only species in the animal kingdom that don't utilize their feces because it's 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 just a common thing with many 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 animals and uh julianne lee of the adored beast apothecary wrote about this they they utilize what's left in their feces because there's still value there to most animals in the animal kingdom that's not to say i'm i'm telling you to change your mind i am not telling you to change your mind about this i haven't changed my mind about this i don't want this to be happen like it is what it is. I'm not, I'm just putting all of the information out there for you to like go out and do your own research because it's a much more complicated thing than, than what we give it. Like it on the surface, most of us are just like, ew, gross, stop it. It's so much more complicated than that. So I hope this was informative and educational, and I hope that you have as much interest in why this happens and how we can stop it. Um, so no, I don't ever recommend sprays or hot sauces or anything like that. Um, there are also things you can add to your dog's food to make their poop like I don't, I don't remember exactly what it is, but like more bitter or something. So they don't want to eat it. No. Why would you do that? If you're going to add something to your dog's food, go ahead and add in fresh foods that are going to give them the nutrients that their body is looking for to begin with. So be managing your dog's environment, providing them with the best diet you can with where you're at <laughs> at the moment and, um, adding in fresh foods whenever you can. And, um, did I say man? Yeah, I said managing their environment, <laughs> um, providing them with more fresh foods to meet their nutritional needs and, uh, providing them plenty of mental and physical enrichment. So they aren't bored and looking for something to do in the first place. So that is my focus when, uh, when somebody says, "Ugh, my dog's eating poop and it needs to stop. That's where my mind goes as both a trainer and somebody who is very interested in all things health and nutrition related with our dogs and cats. That's where my mind goes. So, um, and also if your dog is eating cat poop, then feeding your cat a more species appropriate diet, that also is going to 
increase the digestibility factor, right? So there's less availability of nutrients in the excrement. I hope that's making sense. Um, the, in my mind, it makes total sense. So <laughs> let me know. Um, make sure to join the family over on Patreon. I think this is just such an incredibly interesting topic. Maybe if you're if you've listened this far, you probably do too. Um, so join the family over on Patreon. Go to the petparentingreset.com. Click on the Patreon tab. You can join for as little as a dollar a month. It helps support the content that I put out to you as well as, um, and guys, at a dollar a month. Here's the thing. I created Patreon because other social media platforms are unreliable. When I put content out, I want you to see, like it, the whole point is for you to see it and engage and have a conversation and learn something new and, and for you to provide your viewpoint and your perspective back to me. That is so important that we have a conversation. This is, isn't just me talking to you. I want to have a conversation. And if you're not seeing my content, we can't do that. So that's why I created Patreon. And as little as a dollar a month, you can join the family. And in addition to that, when you join even at the dollar level, you are gonna get an incredible discount code to score yourself some exclusive pet parent merch. So once you do, go to thepetparentingreset.com, you can click on merch, you'll also get the link in the welcome email from Patreon, and get yourself some of the coolest, if I do say so myself, pet parent merch out there and get yourself a discount. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end today's podcast. I hope you found this as interesting a topic as I do, and I hope to hear more from you about it. Um, maybe you have a different perspective that I didn't include in today's podcast, and I would love to hear that from you. Make sure you join Patreon to let me know about that. Until next week, guys, please give your dogs and cats some extra love and hugs from me. Bye. Oh, oh, oh.